This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you an exclusive interview with Secretary, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Ajit Prakash Sahani, on Digital India Anniversary. The interviewer is AIR correspondent Sonu Sood. The Digital India program was launched to transform India into a digitally empowered society and knowledge economy. Six years after its launch, it is being hailed as one of the government's biggest achievements. In his address, Prime Minister today said, Digital India is sadhana of Atmanirbhar Bharat and slogans for stronger India in 21st century. Sir, looking back, how do you view the progress India has made on the digital front in these six years of Digital India? I think we have made very serious progress in these six years. The digital footprint has spread nationwide. Aadhaar now covers 129 crore records. Mobiles are there with 115 crore mobile subscribers, 160 crore bank accounts. There are almost 80 crore internet subscribers. So this is a very, very significant leap over what was there six years ago. The number of transactions... We have a portal called eTal, which keeps track of the number of transactions happening across all kinds of digital India projects. And this now comes to an average of about 22 crore per day. That is the kind of rise that has happened. The other platforms like Government eMarketplace, DigiLocker, Umang, UPI, GEM, GSTN, all of these have made a huge impact. So now with the mobile in the hands of everyone, I think it uh, makes a very big difference to what, what we have accomplished and what we can accomplish further. So what are the key programs under Digital India that have given a boost to digital empowerment across the country, if you would categorize them broadly? One of them is for people who are not having access to computers or maybe even to mobiles. The common service centers have got established almost in the nook and corner of the entire country. We used to have about, I think, 84,000 CSCs in 2014. And now we have about 3.75 lakh common service centers. Out of the 2.58 lakh gram panchayats, we have one or more common service centers in 2.51 lakh gram panchayats which is huge, which means that in every Gram Panchayat, practically, you have a walk-in centre. The second scheme that has made an impact is PMG Disha. This is Pradhan Mantri Gramin Disha program, which is for digital literacy. And in this, about 4 crore people have been trained, about 3 crore of them have been tested and certified, and this is one person per family. So when I say 4 crore people trained, it means people from 4 crore families who are actually trained. It's a short program, but it familiarizes a person with use of mobile phones, use of internet, and digital payments and such things. Third thing that has empowered people is a very recent one. The e gramin stores that have been opened by common service centers. Today, Honorable Prime Minister also spoke to someone who was a beneficiary who had used the services of Gramini store. Similarly, the programs around uh, work from home, which have enabled people to work from home using wireless or fiber-based broadband, the establishment of rural BPOs that have brought jobs into the rural areas, a number of other missions covering specific sectors, National Digital Health Mission, etc. These are very key programs. In fact, the thrust of Digital India was to realize the Prime Minister's vision of a digital Bharat, that is, a digitally empowered villages. So you have outlined uh, the various ways in which the government has progressed in this endeavor. What are the key challenges in this regard? We have reached about 1.7 lakh gram panchayat. Fiber has reached now under the BharatNet program. 80,000 gram panchayats still to be covered in this. And then once the fiber reaches the gram panchayat, taking it further to all the villages in the gram panchayat. There are about 6 lakh villages in the country. So that's the next important step. And then also making sure that either through wireless or through fiber, everyone, every family in the country should have good access to broadband, good access to internet, and good access to various services that are carried over these mediums. So that is one challenge. The second challenge, of course, remains digital literacy and uh, empowerment, which again, we are making very good progress. There are about 15 crore rural families in India. So we have covered about 4 crore families with uh, at least one person in the family becoming digitally literate in a formal manner. So we have to also take up uh, further programs in that direction. The third uh, significant challenge is popularizing our nationwide platforms. 
and uh, making sure that the awareness is there about the kind of services that are available through e-Sanjeevni, for instance, or Diksha platform in education. So these are fabulous sets of services which are already available. But not all the families are aware. They don't make use of these. So there's a lot of ground to cover in popularizing and ensuring that these are used in a very significant number by families spread across the country. So there's a natural hesitancy towards adopting a change, especially if it's a technological change. Of course, we have seen also the other way, actually, that a number of families where we don't expect them to use a particular service, we have seen a huge adoption, especially during the COVID pandemic. The number of persons downloaded Arogya Setu, for instance, more than 19.5 crore people have downloaded Arogya Setu, huge. And similarly, the number of people who have used COVID for their COVID vaccination and for getting certificate, that once again is a huge number, so much so that the COVID platform is now attracting attention across the globe and many other countries want to make use of it. Another thing is that you just now talked about the smartphone boom. Now that coupled with affordable data, data prices have really come down because of the efforts of the government. So this boom has penetrated almost every nook and corner of the country. How has the government leveraged this boom to improve governance and service delivery and move ahead on its path of minimum government, maximum governance? We have some of the flagship programs that not just make use of this factor directly, but also enable a large number of other services to become easy to use. Aadhaar, for instance. Aadhaar is not primarily a physical identity card. It's a digital, it's an online identity card. It's something that you can invoke in various kinds of applications, whether it is for opening a new bank account or it is for getting a new SIM card or for various other activities. It's a very flexible kind of digital identity which a person carries. Umang has uh, brought in a huge number of services, services that used to be provided over separate apps by different departments, some by this state government or that state government, one city or the other. We now have almost 21,000 services available or accessible through Umang app alone. And out of these, about 18,000 plus are, of course, digital payment services or billing services. But uh, the remaining are other types of services pertaining to EPFO, pertaining to PAN, pertaining to the municipal services of all kinds. So all of those services are now available on one app. So that seriously empowers anyone who has a mobile phone because through one app and through one kind of a login, you are able to maintain access to a very large number of services. Similarly, DigiLocker has been a great enabler for people who use mobile phones because in carrying, for instance, the vehicle registration papers or driving licenses or a pen card, now all of these can be accessed through the DigiLocker, including Aadhaar itself. One can access through DigiLocker and DigiLocker is now getting expanded into a health um, records locker as well, health locker in conjunction with the National Digital Health Mission. It's already acting as the National Academic Depository, which means that more than 800 universities now store their all the degrees and qualifications. They are accessible through DigiLocker. UPI has made a huge impact because UPI with the number of apps riding on UPI, all those make it exceptionally easy for a person carrying a mobile phone to effect digital payment transactions or to receive digital payments. Two factors authentication. This is something which is, I would like to say that India is a leader in this particular space. The two-factor authentication makes it so convenient, so easy for us to do things, whether it is financial transactions or it is receiving delivery of goods from e-com stores. So all of that is, again, innovation that has really been driven by India. So these are some of the very obvious things. And then people now, of course, make a large number of purchases online, not just through the huge uh, businesses, but also through Grameen e-store and uh, many other uh, Indian entities that have cropped up, providing both goods and services of various kinds. I would like to draw your attention to two things. One is concerns over privacy and cyber security when digitization happens. So what is being done to shore up cyber security and to ensure that the constitutional right to privacy goes 
hand in hand with digital india on cyber security i think it's multidimensional issue and we have to pick up the fight in cyber security at various levels so there's a cyber security which has the national dimensions of cyber security dimensions which affect network security issues that affect data center related security or data storage related security when it comes to specific projects and to specific users even the user end level security has to be thought of hygiene factors awareness factors have to be built in so we have a very large program not just for spreading awareness on cyber security but also for training people and that has registered very large numbers but it's an ongoing battle because the people who create malefied uh, kind of problematic viruses and other challenges i think they always are uh, very innovative and we have to keep pace with those on the privacy front data privacy front especially we have wonderful draft legislation that we have taken to the parliament it's now the property of parliament the personal data protection bill and it was referred by the parliament to joint uh, committee of uh, parliament which has members both from rajya sabha and lok sabha once the report of that committee comes back to the honorable speaker we would be taking the bill forward uh, in the earliest possible manner and that will give us a very modern legislation which not only defines what are the rights but also has various mechanisms to safeguard the data privacy of indian citizens and indian residents and so what is the status of international cooperation in the digital world we have close cooperation especially when it comes to what are called computer emergency response teams our cert india has collaborative arrangements with a large number of counterparts across the globe we have collaboration with significant number of countries which is multidimensional where we help we exchange technologies we do joint projects we allow startups from each other's country to visit or to spend time in the other country and to benefit from the ecosystem there we also provide many of our products many products of course are provided by the private sector but even those products that have been successful in e governance from the public sector from nic for instance we do make them available to a number of other countries as well so to conclude the discussion would you say the success story of 21st century hinges largely on digital india program as the honorable prime minister put it very aptly today 2020 is india's decade it is india's decade so he has termed it as a technology decade it's india's decade it's india's show india is moving very significantly forward we are growing in almost every sector at a remarkable or a scorching pace be it electronics or be it availability and the offtake of various kinds of services if we see a startup and the manner in which they are coming up and the manner in which many of them are becoming unicorns soon to be unicorns or unicorns themselves i think we see a huge groundswell of activity and as this uh, becomes mainstream as every citizen in india starts participating and making use of these services we have a hugely bright future ahead of us so let's see how we can combine the extraordinary talent we have within india with the extraordinary requirement of goods and services from the it and electronic sector and make it india's decade or india's decade thank you so much sir for sharing your valuable insights on government's transformational flagship program digital india for the listeners of all india radio thank you thank you so much you were listening to an exclusive interview with secretary ministry of electronics and information technology ajay prakash sahani on digital india anniversary the interviewer was air correspondent sonu sood this program was produced and presented by the news services division of all india radio You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. The program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsttalks@gmail.com.